The Food and Drugs Authority, FDA, says it has detected through its market surveillance activity the presence of falsified Coatem 2120 and Zento tablets circulating in the Ghanaian market. The falsified Coatem with batch numbers NOF2153 and F2261 and Zento with the batch numbers 340945 are said to have enough DACA registration number and Arabic writing on the pack. Head of Communications at the Food and Drugs Authority, James Latte, is in the studio. Thank you for coming, sir. Thank now, you Now, uh, the market surveillance activity of sampling and testing of medicines using Truscan RM Analyzer reviewed the details of these falsified documents. Exactly. But, let's start from here. Why aren't we able to detect when these drugs are entering the country? Uh, le let me mention this, that these drugs already they are suspected to have been smuggled into the country so there's no way that when they are entering you'll be able to dictate them and you know in ghana by regulation we have two approved routes by which you can import medicines into this country we are talking about tema harbor and kutuka international airport even these two places people can decide to conceal unregistered of fake products in original products into the country. Let me explain what I mean. Assuming I've registered some products, FDA has given me approval. I'm importing the products to the country. I bring a 40 footer container of the registered products. I can decide to conceal unregistered ones in it. Now, when it gets to the port, there is no way that SEPS officials can open every single box and inspect it in the 40 footer container what we do is that we put we pick products at random and check them so when you pick and the ones that you pick happen to be the registered ones the unregistered ones are still concealed mm. so you know aside the porous borders the smuggling aspect coming in even at the approved routes this is may happen you, you understand that is why the fda as put in what we call post-market surveillance system. That system, what it does is that it will make sure that the FDA will go on the markets, check the products that are there. So in case you smuggle something, something has come to the market that is no good, we'll detect that we have done now. So this is the way you operate. Mm. All right. So since you published this information, yeah. I, I, I mean, I can, I can imagine people who may not have access to our platform now how are you making sure that the information gets to the very person on the ground to know that these are the signs i should look for if i'm buying core term yes. or zento and avoid taking these uh fake drugs now what we normally do is when an issue like this comes up and we issue a press statement all our regional offices are given a copy and they circulate the copy within the local media within the region Aside that, they go out, like I've come here, they do a lot of education, explaining to the general public. Aside this education that is done, officers go around from shop to shop, checking products that are there. As we are talking right now, our officers are on the market, all over the country, checking products. So this is the way we operate, to make sure that the consumer is protected. Mm. Now, I'm, as you're speaking, I'm just yeah. casting my mind, just yeah. in Accra Central alone. Mm the number of markets, the yeah. number of shops yeah. that may be, yeah. be selling drugs as yeah. pharmacies or yeah. chemical sellers. Yeah. Do you yeah. have enough people to do that before the drug you know, reaches anybody to kill them? You know, it is, it is, it is difficult. I, I need to admit that. Pharmacy Council, for instance, has a copy of this release. Pharmacy Council will also communicate with the pharmacists, only the shops. There are platforms that some of our pharmacies are on. These are posted on a platform. In fact, what we do is that as much as we can, we make sure that this message is spread all over so people get the information. Even with the hospitals, we have what we call uh, institutional contact persons. They have a platform. We posted this on the platform, and they are responding to it. So far, we've, we've made sure that we send it so wide that everyone will get the information. But I must admit that Yes, it's possible one or two people may not hear about it. 
but as much as possible, we spread the message. So far, have we recorded any person reporting of side effects as a result of taking these drugs? No, not yet. We know how to report it. Mm, but do we uh, know just, yeah. the kind of effects uh, one can uh, suffer you know, as a result uh, of taking these what drugs? What was noticed from uh, the true scan information was that it contains starch, you understand, which were, I wouldn't say it's harmful. Mm. But the only thing, the only problem is that when, for instance, you are taking coatin and you know you are treating malaria and you are treating nothing, you are compounding your issue. That's a problem. Interesting. Yeah. Now, I, I remember sometime earlier this year, we brought the story of a certain uh, product, Topstoxin, that, that killed uh, a, a, yes. wom a woman's yes. babies yes. because it was yes. used in the house. Quite recently, there was another story that someone had died from the same uh, drug using that same uh, pesticide, uh, it, it is. Do we know what uh, it's on the market currently with regards to that, that drug? I remember that you launched a certain campaign to, yes. to get, get it yes. off the market. Yes. Uh, I remember when this issue came up, um, EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, they are in charge of these chemicals and things. They issued a statement. And they warn the general public on this. You know, there are times when it comes to issues like this, there's no way you can go around talking to everybody. So normally when you issue the statement, the media, you've helped a lot, you understand, in propagating such message. I think consumers must understand that if a regulator comes out and says that there's this product, it's not supposed to be used in the household. I mean, consumers must just take it. Because every information that is given from the regulator is to protect the consumer. So the consumers need to take those things serious. Because the point is that someone may be having this tough toxin somewhere selling, that the regulator may not see it. So you, the consumer, once you've heard it, just ignore it, don't buy it, don't patronize it. You even have to report the person to the regulators, mm. so that the person will be dealt with. Coming back to the issue of fake yeah. drugs, are there any pointers, are, are, there, are there anything or things on a packaging or about a drug that a consumer should know, that yes. should alert them that what I may be taking is not original. You know, if you're picking this quartet in the center, when you look at a package, you cannot see the difference between the original and the fake. So I would say that it would be difficult for the consumer to identify these things most of the time. But what I would say is that there are some basic things that can help the consumer. For instance, you have a product that you normally use. When you go to the market and you buy the product and you notice any slight feature that has changed on the product, the best thing you have to do is never to patronize it. For instance, you are buying a cough mixture. There's a, a smell that comes from the cough, cough mixture. This time, what you are smelling is different from what you knew. Immediately, you don't, you don't use it. Ask questions about it. You can even inform the regulator about the product. Or there's a color of the product. The color has changed. What you used to know, now you're seeing something different. It used to be pink, now you're seeing red. No, you don't have to patronize it. So it could be color, it could be taste, it could be just, uh, let me say that, even the feel of it, the smell. Once you notice these changes in a product that you already know, the best things are do not patronize. One other thing I want to mention is that, you see, as a member of the public, we have said it every time, that medicines are supposed to be sold in pharmacy shops, licensed chemical shops, hospitals. Why do you buy medicines from a peddler? Why do the peddlers have access to the medicines to sell them to us? That, that, that's an issue we all need to answer. Because the point is that people walk anywhere and they buy medicine. But just assume that I am selling medicine buses and you've walked into a bus. I sell, you refuse to buy. I come there tomorrow with a package, refuse to buy. Would I do it again? I will never do it. But I'm made to believe that there are laws regulating such things. So why aren't they being enforced? We have done a lot of exercises with the police mm. where these people have been arrested. But you arrest them today, tomorrow they are there. And you say, let's ask how realistic it is to maintain that. I won't say we'll stop that. We'll continue to do that. Have we considered uh, a different approach? If arresting them is not working, mm -hmm. uh, have, have we considered a different approach? Education. 
Because and me, is that working? I think so, to a large extent. I know people who were patronizing medicines in buses. They stopped. And because of education, they stopped. So to me, if we continue to let the general public understand the effect of buying medicines outside these approved premises, I mean, people with disease from buying from such places, and that will help. Once there's no demand, don't it be a supply? Nobody wants to do business and lose. If I carry medicines and nobody buys, I'm not going to carry it. I put it somewhere. So I think the consumer must exercise his or her rights by refusing to buy medicines that are sold outside this place. And that's not to say that you won't find fake products at the approved place, but just that you realize with that, you minimize the incident of getting these things. Mm. I remember some time yeah. there was, uh, maybe with coatem, but another malaria drug yeah. uh, that had this cold that you could key in to, to find out if the product is uh, fake or not. Uh, yeah, I, you are talking about the MP degree, the mm, device that mm -hmm. they brought. Yes, yes. Is it still yes. in existence? Is it? Oh, yes. It's a device they use. You understand? And FDA, we have encouraged that industry should buy into that device. So if industry buys into it and consumers know that when they buy products, to just key this thing and to tell them whether it's fake or mm -hmm. it will help. Our only challenge with it is that it wouldn't tell you whether the product is substandard or not substandard. I can be, I can manufacture a product and you key in and it will indicate that yes, it's come from Jade's manufacturing company. Meanwhile, I've done it substandard. It's not up to standard. So still, I'm, I'm providing something to the public that is not up to the standard. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a nice device. We don't have a problem with it. But what we are saying is that it doesn't deal with the issue holistically. Salate, thank yeah. you so much for your company this morning. Thank you. Uh, that hopefully people would take a cue from this. Uh, if you're purchasing Quartemozintel, just be careful you're buying the right product.